Well, good evening and welcome to Broken Man Ministries. I'm Evangelist Luke McFarlane and I am so thrilled to be bringing you the Word of God this evening. I'm just so happy that we can get together around the Word tonight. It's going to be a powerful night as we hear what the Holy Spirit has to say. It's going to take you to another level. And my prayer and my desire is that you won't just be a child of God, but you're going to be a son and a daughter of God. And you won't just be a follower of Jesus Christ, but you will be a warrior for Jesus Christ. Tonight, I'm just thrilled to be standing here before you. I'm thrilled to be given the privilege by the Lord to speak His Holy Word. And I pray and I ask the Lord to just guide me and lead me as I bring you this Word tonight. But before we get into the Word of God and everything else that is about to unfold, let's just do a bit of housekeeping. Firstly, I want to welcome... The even more new members to the Broken Man family. God bless every one of you who have accepted the invitation. God bless every one of you who have clicked on the invite button and accepted the invite. I just want to give God praise for your life. I just want to welcome you aboard. I just pray that as you've joined this channel, as you've joined this page, you are going to be inspired to live a life of more than a conqueror. I believe the Lord is calling every one of us to not just turn up at church, but begin to be disciples of Christ, empowering those that are around us so that they too can follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight, welcome to all the new members of Broken Man. It is so good to have you on board. Every night I pray for you guys. Every night I pray for everyone who clicks that button. And for the 1,500 to 2,000 odd people who are not yet members but do like the page, can I encourage you to come over? Can I encourage you to become part of Broken Man Ministries? Tonight, as we get into the, uh, the, uh, the message, a few housekeeping things. Uh, if you're looking at becoming part of the Broken Man family, or my friend on Facebook, please, just some housekeeping rules. You have to have a photo of who you are. Um, not a cat, not a dog, uh, not any object, um, not a little baby but a photo of the adult who's joining or the person that is joining and some bio data that goes with you because we are seeing a number of people trying to hack the service and trying to come into the page just to uh, slander it and to destroy it and we just don't have time for that. We are here to do the Father's business and that business is to preach the Word of God. So tonight, as we get into the Word of God, I want to welcome all of you and I want you all to remember that the Lord is for you and he's not against you. He has a plan for your life and he's going to fulfill that, that plan for you. Tonight, um, I just want to take a moment and just uh, jump off topic for a second and just talk about the Australian bushfires that are happening. And I just ask all the people on Broken Man Family to remember the people that have been going through this and just remember the families that have been hurt, the, have suffered loss, lost to property, lost to life. And also the fact of uh, the people that... Uh, that have uh, have just lost everything and, and there's really nothing left for them. Pray that the Lord will just support them and somehow, somewhere, someone will be able to share the love of Jesus. You know, the Australian bushfires um, are pretty nasty fires that we have over here because our fires are not, they're not natural fires. They didn't just fall out of the sky. You see, our fires have been deliberately lit. Uh, that means we have these fire bugs who run around and they start these fires and these fires grow into mega fires and before you know it they consume hundreds of thousands of hectares of land they kill off all the wildlife and the population over 80 percent of the koalas have been wiped out on kangaroo island kangaroos have been burned alive uh, people have lost so much and this fire just rages through it nearly 60, 70 kilometers an hour, just devouring everything in its path. So remember the people that have lost so much. Remember the firefighters on the ground. Let's not forget them. These are volunteers. They don't get paid for what they do, but they risk their limb in life so that they can help the people that are so distraught. Uh, tonight, uh, at the end of the service, I'm going to mention them as well. But just before we continue on, some housekeeping rules. I'm going to be bringing you the Word of God tonight. We're going to be doing a bit of reading. Then, at the end of the service, I'm going to give you an opportunity to welcome the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart and into your life. And finally, I'm going to close with the 2020 promise 
that I delivered here on Broken Man in, in, in the first week of Jan on, on New Year's Eve. And I pray that you're going to be blessed. Uh, on the screen, I don't know if you can see it, um, I have the YouTube page or channel up. You're welcome to become part of the YouTube family as well. All you need to do is go to YouTube, go to your search bar and type in at Broken Man 1274, all one word and numbers obviously. And it should bring you straight to this page that you can see on the screen over there. Feel free to go into all the videos that are up there. There's tons up there. And that's there to equip you, to empower you, and take you to another level. So tonight, if you're part of uh, Broken Man on Facebook, why not come over and join us on YouTube as well? My desire is to grow that channel and spread the gospel on that media platform as well in 2020 so that you and me can partner together and empower others as I empower you. Tonight, we are well into truly the uh, 12th and 13th days of January and 2020 is well with us now and how we're going to handle 2020 is going to be so important to, uh, to us going forward in life. You know, 2019 has been a rough year for a lot of people as I've met with them, especially with uh, the people who suffered with these bushfires. But I want to encourage you, 2020 doesn't have to be that way. We can go to another level with the Lord Jesus Christ and we can see the power of God come down and move in our lives. So with that said, housekeeping done, let's bow our heads, let's pray, and let's welcome the Holy Spirit in and get ready for the message tonight on Broken Man. Shall we bow our heads? Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. We declare that you have the highest praise, O Lord, and we want to just call upon your name tonight as we come to get around your word. Heavenly Father, I take authority in the name of your Son, Jesus. I release your ministering spirits, O God, into the homes, into the phones, into the televisions, into the... Uh, into the screens that people are watching this, oh God, that will pick it up on the live cast or the rebroadcast. And Lord, I just release your ministering spirits into them. And that Lord, it won't be just my voice that they hear, that they will hear your Holy Spirit, who is speaking, oh God, to take us to another level. Father, tonight, I want to welcome your presence over me, oh God. Let it be you that speaks and not me, oh Lord. As John the Baptist said, I must decrease that he might increase, O oh God. So, Lord, tonight, let your Holy Spirit just be in control of this message. And let it bless those that are out there. Give them ears to hear and hearts to understand and eyes to see, O oh God. And let the peace of Jehovah Shalom rest upon everybody. Tonight, Lord, we just welcome you into this place. And we give you all the praise, the glory, the honor. And everybody said, Amen. Tonight, we're going to be looking at the title... On Broken Man called Now Ain't the Time to Quit. I put up this little uh, um, saying from President Theodore Roosevelt of the United States and he says do what you can with what you have where you are. Very profound words by the late president, words that would transform society as we know it. But tonight, keeping those words in mind and tying it together with our message is what I want to get across to your heart from my heart. Uh, because these messages that I'm bringing you are not just messages pulled out of thin air. This is from the Lord. This has worked in my life. It is working in my life. I am not a finished product yet. The Lord is still working on me. And tonight's message is called, Now Ain't the Time to Quit. You know, we go through so many things in life. And sometimes the war that we're in can drain us and run us down. And it's easier to toss the towel in and say, I quit. Um, but today, as, as we get into 2020 and we go forward, I'm going to encourage you at the end of this message, I hope you will be empowered to not quit. I hope you will be empowered to move forward. If you've been following what's been happening here on Broken Man, I've been speaking on some very 
very important topics that the Lord has been sharing with me. And I pray that you will follow it up on YouTube and on the past posts. And you will be blessed and you will just be enlightened into what the Lord Jesus has to say for your life and my life. Tonight, I want to uh, also say that I'm broadcasting from my home, which is not a million dollar studio. And if you haven't picked him up already, uh, that's young Chase. He's walking around. He's my Malamute. Uh, he's my best friend. And uh, he hangs out with me over here. And uh, so if you see him walking through the studio, I hope you'll just uh, concentrate on the message and not the doggy. Uh, tonight, let's get your Bibles and let's go straight into the Word of God. So if you have your Bibles, we are turning to tonight's reading from Joshua chapter 1. And I'm reading verses 1 to 3. And then I will jump to another reading from Joshua chapter 6. A reading from verses 1 to 5. And because I want to set the context, I want to set the frame, I want to set the perimeters of what tonight's message is and how it portrays itself and connects itself to not quitting. You might be fighting a battle, you might be going through stuff at the moment that has drawn you weary. Rest if you must, but do not quit. Whatever happens, remember, the Lord never quit on you, and you don't need to quit if you've got the Lord on your side. You've got to square the shoulders, and you've got to understand that breakthrough doesn't happen all at once. Breakthrough happens in stages, in phases. All throughout the Old Testament, you can see that breakthrough came to the Israelites after they left Egypt in stage by stage. They had to conquer different tribes and conquer lands so that they could speak the word of God. They could establish the kingdom of God and they could take the land. So tonight, as we get into the word of God, let's read from Joshua chapter 1, reading from verses 1 to 3. Now, after the death of his servant Moses, the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' his assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, you and all these people, and cross over the Jordan into the land that I am giving the children of Israel. I have given you every place where your sole of your foot will tread, just as I promised to Moses. I want to set the context here. The Israelites have left Egypt, a miraculous escape from Egypt, caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. Uh, I say that uh, uh, in tongue in cheek, caught between Pharaoh and the deep blue sea and rock in a hard place. And the Lord delivers them by Moses stretching out his hand and splitting the Red Sea. And the Israelites cross over on dry land. I want you to keep that in your mind. You see, for it to break over, for you to to uh, to move forward, for you to break into the promises of God, you are going to have to expect and believe for the miraculous. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You cannot take a ease back stance on your Christian life and on your day-to-day -day life. You've got to establish the territory. You've got to establish the kingdom of God. The Bible says the kingdom of God is taken by force. And the only way you're going to take the kingdom of God is by taking it by force from the enemy because the devil does not want to give it up. Here we see that Moses has died. They've spent 40 years in the wilderness, a trip that should have taken them three days to get to the promised land. But 40 years go by and Israel has lost a generation buried in the sands of time in the desert. And a new generation has risen. And that new generation is going to be led by Joshua. Moses is taken up. He is removed. Uh, the Lord takes him away. And Joshua becomes the new leader of the Israelites. They spend their time mourning for Moses. And they look for his body, but they can't find it. And then... They move on and get ready to cross the Jordan. So now they have crossed the Jordan and they are now sitting at the precipice of what to do next. And I'm cutting the story short just to, for a matter of time. The Lord of hosts appears to, to Joshua and gives him this statement and says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, arise you and all these people and cross over the Jordan 
and go to the land that I'm giving to the children of Israel. Joshua goes through a sort of a time of, I've got big shoes to fill, but the Lord of hosts appears to him and tells him, don't be afraid, be of good courage, do as I tell you and everything is going to be fine. And I'm paraphrasing that. And after that speech he gets from the Lord of hosts, Joshua's a new man. He's, he's reborn. He's empowered. He's, he's ready to go to fight. He's ready for war. And he comes back to the camp and he tells his people, he says, we're going to take the land that's in front of us and it happens to be a town called a city called Jericho. Reading from Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 and onwards. Now Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. Let me tell you the reason why. Word had got out that this great people had crossed over from Egypt. And they didn't do it through a war. They had this God, this Jehovah God with them. And uh, the ark went before them. And they split the seas and they walked across uh, onto the other side, ready to take the promised land. So there's a fear and a, an intrepid feeling around the people in the neighborhood. They're scared. They are like, mm, these boys are coming. These guys have power. These guys have strength. They know their God. You see, the people of Jericho were pagans, obviously. The Hittites, the Levites, the Jesuits, all these guys, they were all pagans. The problem with their gods is they used to pray to their gods, Dagon and, and uh, Baal and all these gods, but their gods never answered them. But here was a type of people that were coming, and their god actually answered them. He splits the Red Seas, he, he opens columns of fires, he divides rivers, all in a day's work for the Lord, for Father God. Uh, yeah, no issues at all. And so there's fear in the people that are around. So Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. And no one went out. And no one came in. And the Lord said to Joshua. And the Lord said to Joshua. Behold, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. Along with its king and its mighty men of valor. Here's the Lord speaking to Joshua. Here is he telling him something he hasn't done as yet. He's already telling Joshua, I've already given you the king. I've already delivered the land into your hands. I want you to pay attention to this. You may not feel like a conqueror. Joshua didn't feel like a conqueror at the time. But he held on to the promise that the Lord gave him. Is that I've already given you the land. I've already opened the doors for you. I've already prepared the way for you. I believe the Lord is saying this to you today. You need to start moving like Joshua. You need to take God at his word. You need to take the word of God and plaster it in your room and plaster it around your house. And confess this word every time you walk past it. Or every time your eyes lay a uh, sight upon it. Because the Lord is giving a promise to Joshua. And he's saying, no, no, no. Just I will deliver Jericho into your hands along with its king. And I believe the Lord is saying to you and me today, I will deliver you from the problems that you're in. Along with all the issues that are going on, I'm just going to snap you out of there. But you've got to do exactly as I say. Verse 2, and the Lord's, uh, verse 3, and march around the city with all the men of war. Notice, it's all the men of war. Circling the city one time and do this for six days. So for six days, Joshua had to gather the men of war and march around this city. Not saying a word, not blowing trumpets, not firing artillery or whatever weaponry they had at the time. But he had to just march around the city. The Lord's asking you to do the same thing. Sometimes you're going to have to march around your problem. You're going to have to spend time walking and pacing the floors of your home or your room if you want to see the breakthrough come in your life. If you sit down passively and expect the Lord to break through in your life, it is not going to happen. Because the Bible says in Psalms, you have made my hands for war and my fingers to fight. 
God has called you and me to be warriors. We are to take our possession because we live in a fallen world. We live in a world that is ruled by the devil. Have seven priests carry seven ram's horns in front of the ark. Then, on the seventh day, march around the city seven times while the priests blow the horns. And when there is a long blast of the ram's horn and you hear it sound, have all the people give a mighty shout. <coughs> then, the walls of the city will collapse and the people will go up and each man straight ahead. Then jumping to verse 14 and 15 of the same chapter, Joshua 6. And on the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. And they did this for six days. Then on the seventh day they got up at dawn and marched around the city seven times in the same manner that was the only day they circled the city seven times. I want you to understand something over here. There's a, there's a parallel that the Lord is, is showing us. And I pray that you get it today. I, I pray that you understand it. I pray that... That the Holy Spirit imprints it into your heart. Joshua was told to do exactly like the Lord said. It was unconventional to him. You don't fight a war by marching around a city and not saying a word. You fight a war by going to war. You attack it. You seize it. You, you, uh, you lay a waste to the city. But here was Joshua following a method and a process that was quite contrary to his earthly mind. And this is how the Lord wanted it done. There's a lesson in here for you and me. We have got to remember that when we follow the Lord Jesus Christ, he is going to give us wars. He is going to give us strategies that will be unconventional to the feeble mind. But if you are following what the Lord is saying, then you are going to enter into this promised land. And after the seventh time around, verse 16, the priests blew the horns and Joshua commanded the people to shout, for the Lord has given you the city. I want you to understand here. For six days, once a day, the entire army had to get together and they had to march in formation and not say a peep. They couldn't even whisper to each other. And because the Lord commanded that they say nothing but just walk around their problem. I believe the Lord is saying this to you and me. And this came as a revelation in my own life. Sometimes we need to just stop talking to people around us. Because out of the 100%, 80% don't really care about you. 20% are glad that they're not going through what you're going through. And out of the 10% you have left, maybe one or two actually really care for you. So don't believe everyone that phoned you or called you. And don't expect anyone to call you because that's the way 80% are. You see, we're going to have to do what these soldiers did. They didn't say a word to each other. They just walked in silence. They walked around that problem and they said, Father God, the high priest blew the trumpets. The high priests worshipped. And they kept quiet. I believe the Lord's saying this to you and me today. You need to walk around your problem. Don't talk to anybody about it. Don't tell them when you pray. Don't tell them when you read your Bible. Don't tell them you're fasting. Don't tell them that you're, 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 you're becoming a warrior for the Lord Jesus Christ. No, just move in silence. Shock and awe. President Donald Trump, I'm a great supporter of that man because he's a businessman. And forget all the stuff they say about him. The man knows how to fix the swamp. And we need that in Australia over here. God is asking you, to move around your Jericho without saying a word. Because if you speak, you're going to say something that's going to imprison you. You're going to self-curse yourself. You're going to pronounce curses on yourself. When you say, I can't do it. I don't think it'll work. I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know if they even care. I don't know if they're going to do it. You bring curses on yourself. So don't say a word. Instead, just quote the word of God. Just continue to speak the word of God. And for six days, these soldiers did only that. Wake up in the morning, put on the battle gear, and march around their Jericho. 
Maybe you need to wake up every morning. Maybe you need to wake up at midnight. I wake up at midnight. I go from midnight till about 2.30. I put on my battle gear. And I begin to march around my Jericho. In silence, I begin to march around it. And so for six days, <coughs> Joshua and the team begin to walk around Jericho. You see, in the six days, I believe the Lord was doing a work in those, in those men, in those men of war, in Joshua himself. I believe he was getting rid of all that doubt. He was, he was taking them to another level to trust him by faith. Well, I don't have the answers for what tomorrow's going to hold. I don't know how I'm going to pay the next bill. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But I'm going to trust the name of Jehovah Jireh, God as my provider. I don't know in all this chaos, Brother Luke, uh, how I'm going to handle it. I don't know. But I'm going to trust the name of Jehovah Shalom. I don't know how I'm going to just get to the next day. Uh, but I'm going to get up anyway and I'm going to pray and I'm going to seek the Lord. And I want to encourage you. You know, praying is not just about asking the Lord, give me, give me, give me. Praying is about building an intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about... It's about getting to a level where he already knows your heart and you're already thanking him for a miracle that hasn't happened yet. But your faith is what's making you believe. And as these... Soldiers begin to march around Jericho. I could imagine the things that would have run through their heads. I know it would have run through my head for me. Is our leader crazy? Is this Christ I'm following all bogus? How am I supposed to win a battle by doing absolutely nothing? You see, these are the questions that went through these, these soldiers' minds. I'm pretty sure of it. Why can't I use the latest weapons that I have? I'm so itching to go into war. You see, but what these soldiers had to learn, these men of war, was that the way to fight is to fight by being led by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? You've got to be led into a war. You've got to be led through a war. Because when the Lord leads you, if he leads you, he'll never leave you, nor forsake you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Why green pastures? Why not dry? Because green pastures talk about abundance. He leads me beside still waters. Why still waters? Because you can't drink from a, from a, from a torrent of water flowing in a river. You've got to drink from the still sides. So you can digest it, you can actually scoop it and drink it. He restores my soul. Maybe you're going through hell, I don't know. But the Holy Spirit can come and restore your soul. He can restore your soul for you. If you were here in Melbourne and I could anoint you with some oil, I would. But you can anoint yourself with some oil. Get some oil, I don't care what oil it is, but get some oil. And then say, Lord, as I anoint myself with this oil, I anoint myself with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I welcome your peace over my life. Jehovah Shalom. These soldiers marched for six days. Six days of frustration. Six days of after marching. They would sit at the camp and go, I don't know what we're doing marching around like this. I mean, we train for war, but this ain't no war. I don't even know if Joshua knows what he's doing. He's young. He ain't as good as Moses. Moses, we fought battles. You see, their hearts will begin to speak. Sometimes when the Lord gets you and puts me in a waiting pattern, and I've learned this the hard way in my life. I was a lot younger. I learned that it's in the waiting pattern that you see what's really inside your heart. You see, when you immerse yourself in the Word of God, then the Word of God should flow from you. As they began to march around the city, Joshua instructed the priests to go before them and sing praises.
I believe the Lord is saying this to you before you decide to take on the enemy and defeat him. You need to learn to praise the Lord. Any war you fight in the spirit must be fought with praise. You've got to learn to praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to learn to, to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Because when you do that, you learn to fight a battle on another level. You don't involve yourself. Anyone who is at war does not involve themselves in the affairs of this world. Because you're fighting another battle. You don't have time for slander. You don't have time for gossip. You don't have time for half-truths. You don't have time for tail-carrying, tail-bearing, name-calling. No, you don't because you're living on another level. Or you should be living on another level. I believe the Lord is calling every one of us to not just be children of God. And I keep saying this. The more I think about it, the more it impacts my own life. The time for being a child is over. You need to learn to become a son and daughter of God. There's a big difference between a child and a son and daughter. I believe the Lord is not just calling you and me to be followers of Christ. He's calling us to be disciples of Christ. He's calling us to be warriors for Christ. The kingdom of God is taken by force. And the only way it can be taken is by preaching the uncompromised gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, you need to be in a church that speaks of power and authority. Power of the Holy Spirit, dunamis, and authority of the name of Jesus. You need power and authority to fuse together to defeat the enemy that's in your life and bring breakthrough. As Joshua and the, and the, and the army marched around, the priests began to worship. The priests began to change the atmosphere that was around Jericho. I want to sidebar for a moment and take a view of, from a perspective of the, of the Jericho, the Jericho people. How fearful would it have been for them to just see an army marching around them in absolute silence? I believe the Lord is calling some of us to learn the art of silence. I've had to learn it. Nothing makes a stronger statement than silence. And the people of Jericho were so frightened that their doors were shut. Nobody went in and nobody went out. See, they'd been preparing for this. What they did expect was this unconventional way of war. Of priests playing music and military men marching in absolute silence around their city. And as that time came, as they began to work on it, As they began to walk, uh, walk around the city, the sixth day had finished. And big day was coming the seventh day. They were going to do it seven times. This was a big day. I believe the Lord is saying to me, the day is coming when you're going to have to shout for your city to fall down so you can go in and subdue it. I believe the Lord is calling you and me to be like Joshua and his men to do exactly as the Lord told them to do. Tonight, I'm hoping this is making sense to you. I'm hoping you're getting the picture and the analogy, the perspectives of how this applies to your life and to my life. On the seventh day, they were battled up and geared and they were ready to go. This time, the weapons were all polished, extra sharp. Boots were looking extra clean. And they knew that after seven walks, they were going to take the city. But the marvelous thing is that the Lord's ways are very different from your ways and my ways. And the Lord caused the people of Israel to give a loud shout of victory saying, Shout for the Lord has given you this city. And so they shouted praise and I believe you and me need to shout praise while we walk around our cities. While we walk around our our fortifications that need to come down. There's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. And the only way you break every chain is by taking time and praying. Listen, I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. Whether you're in school doing exams or you're doing homework or you're at home living a billionaire's life. I, I don't care. If you want to see progress in your physical life, 
You have got to be willing to become a warrior and pray your blessing into existence. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. I look at my own life and I've had to grow up a lot in the last two and a half to four years where I've learned that I can't rely on anybody to help my spiritual walk. I've got to help my own spiritual walk. I've got to develop prayers to pray over myself. I've got to quote the blessings of God myself. The preacher ain't going to do it. The preacher ain't going to do it because after the preacher goes home, he's got problems in his own life that he's got to sort out. You're going to have to deliver yourself. Many people who were delivered by the Lord Jesus Christ came to him. The lady with the issue of blood came to him and was delivered. The ten lepers came to him and they were delivered. You're going to need to come to the Lord. You're going to learn. You're going to need to learn how to pray. To break a chain that's been hanging over your life which you just can't shake. It keeps dogging your heels. No matter how much you get two steps forward, it takes you three steps back. I want to encourage you today, learn from Joshua and, Joshua and his team, is that they made a shout. They declared it prophetically. And then the walls fell down. I think it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's weird if you think about it. Normally, the walls fall down and then you shout, yay, the, the battle's won. But they have to shout, yay, and wait for the walls to fall down. Uh, that takes an act of faith. Some of you need to learn to move in faith. You're going to have to say, thank you, Jesus, for opening the doors for my work. Thank you, Jesus, for opening the doors for my applications. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my family. I give you praise today. Yay. And wait for God to do it tomorrow or next week or next month or next year. You see, the persistent, powerful prayers of a righteous man avails much. You need to persist. You need to be persistent in gaining the strong ground for your life. As we look at this, they cross into the city. They take over the city. It's tremendous. Uh, this young lady, Rahab, uh, she is a prostitute. Funny, she will always be remembered as the harlot or the prostitute. But this lady would go on to play a part in the bloodline of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's beautiful. And we're going to look at the lessons that we learn from this. And I pray that you understand these things. And you don't just listen to me, but you read the word of God. And you seek God. And you say, Lord, what do you want to say to me, Lord? I heard what the evangelist said, but what do you want to say to me? And I believe those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You've got to diligently seek him. Diligence means paying extra careful detail, paying the price, waking up, praying, seeking God, living a holy life, living righteous, all these things. This is how you diligently seek the Lord to answer your prayers. Tonight, let's look at these lessons that we learn from it. Rahab, the lady who let the spies live with her and then later tied a scarlet ribbon outside her window so when the walls fell her house would fall because her house was adjacent to the wall and i love how she tied a scarlet ribbon she didn't tie a purple ribbon or a blue ribbon or yellow ribbon she happened to have a scarlet ribbon typology for the blood of the lord jesus christ typology to what had happened in egypt when uh, the death angel moved through the uh, homes of the Egyptians and the Hebrews both. And those that had uh, the blood of the lamb on the lampposts of the house uh, were spared death and lived to see the sun rise. And here was this, this prostitute. Obviously she feared God. And look at the Lord. He's so powerful, Jehovah God. He loves even Rahab. And if you read in the chapters from 1 to 6, you'll see Joshua questions the angel of hosts, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll see them in capital H, it's a hymn. When you see a capital A and a capital H, there's typology for the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, he says, are you with us or against us? And the angel and the host um, of heaven answers and says, neither. You see, the Lord is not about favoritism. He, he, 
he loves everyone. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and that whoever believes on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Rahab, the prostitute, made the right choice. She went with God instead of the evil people of Jericho. In the New Testament later, we will learn that God favored Rahab by making her one of the ancestors of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Rahab is named in Matthew's genealogy of Jesus as the mother of Boaz and the great-grandmother of King David. And out of David's line, salvation comes, the Lord Jesus Christ. Although she'll forever bear the label Rahab the harlot, her involvement in the story declares God's peculiar grace and life-transforming power. Brother and sister in Christ, it doesn't matter what you've done or where you've been. God is an irrespecter of that, but I do believe this, that when you ask him to save you, when you accept him in, into your heart and into your life, he will guide you and he will make a way to rewrite the destiny and plan for your life. He will take you to another level if you are willing to give him that chance. Joshua's obedience to God is critically important to us. At every turn, Joshua followed the word and the direction of God. He didn't work on his feelings. Many times our feelings can get us into a lot of trouble. We need to work on the promises of what the Lord says to us. It's the promises of God that takes us to the next level. Yes. It's the promises of God that takes us, push the envelope, go higher with the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, Joshua obeyed the Lord Jesus. He obeyed God. At every turn, he waited on the Lord. I believe the Lord is saying to you and me, we need to come to a point where we are listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying. We're listening to what he's saying. We are hearing his voice in everything. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. An ongoing theme in the Old Testament is that when the Jews obeyed God, they did well. When they disobeyed, the consequences were bad. The same is true for us today. When we obey the Lord Jesus Christ and His commandments, we have freedom. Freedom without boundaries is not freedom, it's chaos. Today's millennial generation don't want to hear about boundaries. They just want freedom. No, that's chaos. That's why you have so much nonsense going on in this generation that's growing up. Freedom without boundaries is chaos. When God put Adam and Eve in the garden, they were free to do whatever they want, but they had a boundary. Do not eat of these trees. Don't eat of this fruit. For if you eat of it, you shall surely die. For if you eat of it, you will gain knowledge. You see, God wants to put boundaries around your life. Maybe you need to stop going where you've been going. Maybe you need to stop seeing what you've been seeing. Maybe you need to start behaving the way the word actually says to behave. There are many Christians that go to church today, but they behave absolutely nothing like the word of God. Absolutely hypocritical. And the Lord is sitting up there looking down going, I know your works. I know how you go to church. I know how you read your Bible. I also know how you don't follow it. I also know how you treat your others. I know how you treat your family. I know. God is calling us to be people that will obey Him. Tonight, as I part the message, I want to welcome the Holy Spirit into your home again. To my dear brother, dear sister, friend out there who doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ, this is your opportunity. I don't know if what I preached to you made sense to you tonight. Maybe you need time to digest it. Maybe you need time to go over it yourself, and that's fine. But tonight I want to give you an offer, and that offer is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ 
as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved and your house. Tonight, there is no magic portion to drink. There is no mantra to chant. There is no seance to say. There is no religious ceremony to do. All that is required is you be willing to accept the Lord into your heart. The Bible says in Revelation 3.10, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. anyone hears my knock and opens the door, I will come in and I will sup with them. I'll have dinner with them. I'll talk with them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Today, if you don't know Jesus Christ, I'm going to ask you to say this prayer with me. At the end of this prayer, you will be born again and the Lord will come into your life. And he will encourage you, and then I want to encourage you to get around to a good Bible-believing, power-preaching church, whichever part of the world you're in, and begin to allow the Holy Spirit to move in your life and become a new creature in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If anyone, I mean anyone, lawyer, doctor, prostitute, kid, student, Married, divorced, whoever, if anyone be in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away, and all things have become new. Tonight, let's bow our heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this word that has gone out today, O oh God. I want to thank you for this word that has been spoken. I want to thank you that it's your Holy Spirit. Who's in control? Yes, Lord, tonight, as I say this prayer, I just want you out there who watch this video, watch this live cast, to repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I want to welcome you into my life. I give you my life, O oh Lord. I ask you to be the king of my life. I remove myself from the throne and I allow you to take your rightful place. I place you in the highest place over my life. Lord Jesus, tonight I ask that you write my name in your book of life. I confess I am a sinner and I need your grace. So by faith today, I declare that I am saved. My name is written in the book of life and I am now born again. I say goodbye to all the things of my old life and I welcome the new life that you have for me. Write my name in your book of life, dear Lord. And I invite your Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me as your new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. If you prayed that prayer from the bottom of your heart today, then you are part of the kingdom of God. You are now a child of God. And I want to welcome you into the family of God. I want to welcome you into the Broken Man family as well. Like the page, become a follower of the page, join the YouTube channel, go to YouTube, put the search bar, search, get to your search bar, put the search in of at Broken Man 1274, subscribe, join it. Pick up these videos and you can watch it anytime you want. Tonight as we close, I want to say a special prayer for the bushfire volunteers and the people that have lost so much. That the Lord will be with them here at Broken Man Ministries. It's not just about preaching the word, but it's about empathizing with those that are going through such a hard time. Millions and millions of dollars lost. Hundreds of thousands of animals burnt alive. The landscape torched, 
Not because it's an act of God. No, God didn't start these fires. I've been watching a lot of forums where we blame God. The animals died and people lost them. God didn't do it. We did it. We have firebugs who walk around and light these fires in the middle of the night or out in the bush somewhere. They set something ablaze and next thing you know, thousands of acres and hectares of land are burned and scorched. Animals are dead, not because of God. It's because of the meddlesome hands of firebugs. And I strongly believe that these firebugs need to be put in jail for at least their lifetime. Not given a slap on the wrist because the destruction they do is unbelievable. And to the volunteer firefighters out there who are fighting such a, such a hard job, exhausted, watch the YouTube videos, watch the news, exhausted from trying to fight a fire, traveling nearly 50, 60 kilometers an hour, two fires joining to become a mega fire. You can see it from space. Australia's coast is on fire. Let's pray for them as well today. Today, I want you to spend a moment when you're shutting down in the night, just mention the firefighters in your prayers that God will just protect them, keep them safe. The Prime Minister has deployed the army. A little too late, but better late than never. Um, because an army ain't going to put out a fire. You need firemen who can do it. But let's pray for these firemen. Let's pray for the people who've lost what they've lost. And let's ask the Lord to just be with them at this difficult time when there are no answers. Just more questions than anything else. Heavenly Father, we just lift up everything that's happening in Australia and the fires that are taking place. Lord, by your mighty hand, in the name of your Son, Jesus, Father, I loose your ministering angels to bring clouds of rain, O oh God, and deposit it over the entire fire belt that is burning right now, Father. Lord, by a miraculous sign, you will forgive the land of Australia, O oh God. You will forgive us, O oh God, and you will have mercy upon us, O oh God. And you will send rain, God. The Bible says, ask of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain, and he will send showers to your field. Lord, send, send, send water from the skies, O oh God, and put these fires out, Lord. I decree it in the Spirit. I release it in the Spirit, and I command it to flow in the natural. Oh Lord, I take authority over these fires. I bind these fires in the Spirit, O oh God. I bind it on earth that they be bound in the Spirit. And I loose the clouds of rain in the earth. And I loose it in the Spirit. And let our news broadcasts begin to show the change that is coming, O oh God. Father, thank you for your hand upon those people out there fighting for you. Keep them safe, O oh Lord. Protect them. And thank you for being... Jehovah Shalom, the name we speak over everyone involved at this chaotic time here in Australia. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Tonight as we close, I am going to read the promise for 2020. I pray that you will be blessed. Isaiah 58, reading from verse 8 through to verse 12. Then your light will break forth like the dawn. And your healing will come quickly. Your righteousness will go before you. And the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry out and he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and malicious talk. And if you give yourself to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted souls, then your light will go forth in the darkness and your night will be like noonday. The Lord will always guide you. He will always satisfy you in a sun-scorched land and strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins you will restore the age-old foundations and you will be called repairer of the breach, restorer of the streets of dwelling. Brothers and sisters, tonight I pray the Lord will bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. Tonight, let's bow our heads and let's pray and let's close the service. 
Heavenly Father, thank you tonight for your word. I pray that it is not me that has spoken, but it is your Holy Spirit that has spoken. I pray for the thousands who will watch this rebroadcast. I pray for the ones that have watched this rebroadcast, this broadcast, live broadcast. Bless them, O oh God. I release Jehovah Shalom, the name, into the homes of those watching right now. And to all of those that will watch it on the rebroadcast, I release the names of God, Jehovah Nissi, Jehovah Shama. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sekundi. Yes, God, I release it into their homes. I pray for peace upon them on the remaining week until we meet again next time around your word. Lead and guide them, keep them safe, and let your hand rest upon them, their families, their loved ones, and everything they hold dear. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, I want to thank you so much for being with me tonight allowing me to bring you the word of God I am so humbled by that please take this share it out with your friends and your circles and let the word go out so the word can empower others just like it's empowering you tonight as we say goodnight the Lord bless you and keep you as I said and remember you've got to march around your Jericho if you're going to see the victory and be able to shout on the day the Lord tells you to shout so till next time Thank you for joining me. I'm Evangelist Luke McFarland. It has been a privilege to bring you the Word of God. And until next time, bye-bye for now.